word of God that comes to us from the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Thanthalia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes? Cretans and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, And your daughters and your sons shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray for me as I pray for you this morning. O God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable to you. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We hear the story of Pentecost yet once again. And it occurs to me that if Peter is there with the twelve, it is soon after the death of Jesus, because they're still all together, and they're still probably worshiping in the synagogue. And that synagogue was probably like most churches. You know, there's a few people get excited about everything, and then there's a few people that say, "Mm, yeah, that's the way we do things. And then there's a few people going, what's wrong with those people? You know, we just... they, they, cause, they stir up a lot of problems. And what we get, and I, and I preached about this a few weeks ago, is we get chaos with all of that. The church was bored out of chaos. But remember what I said? What's in the middle of our chaos? Who's in the middle of our chaos? Jesus is always in the middle of our chaos, whatever our chaos, and we forget about that. We get so caught up in our chaos, we forget that Jesus is right there in the middle. That's who Jesus came to be. Jesus 
you know, it's real nice to think Jesus is sitting by our side when we're quiet and we're praying and, and that, that Jesus is in church with us ever since. But, you know, when the chaos gets going and when things get all out of whack and people start yelling and making all kinds of weird sounds, but Jesus is right there in the middle of it. That's who Jesus is and that's who Jesus came to be. So this morning, we, I hear, I've heard this story so many times. I think I've heard it once a year all my life about what's going on with all these people speaking in tongues and all these people speaking in different languages and people, whatever. But it occurred to me, there's somebody that I've never really thought about in this story. It's those people are saying, what's wrong with these people? They're drinking new wine. Well, the word wine that shows up in this particular chapter of, of Acts is the only place that the word, it's glucose, G-L-E-U-K-O-S. That's the only time that word is ever used for wine in the Bible. There's another word that's used for most of it every other time. But this one, it's, it is sweet wine, wine that the grapes have been on the have been on the vine for a while and they picked them and they made the wine and when that wine is real sweet like that, it begins to ferment pretty quickly and it doesn't take long for it to ferment and it's sweet so it tastes really good. It's kind of like us wanting to eat cake. I think I'll have another piece. And so that, they thought those people were, were drunk at nine o'clock in the morning. They were acting like it. They were speaking all these languages and moving around and doing kind of weird things in church. And I wondered who those people might be. Who would have the audacity in the midst of all of this wonderful praising God that was going on? Who would have the audacity to say, these people have lost it. They're, they came to church drunk this morning. So I want to focus on those people for a while. And it's real easy for us to think, you know, there's always been naysayers in the church and and apparently from the, the birth of the church, there were always some naysayers. But, you know, we've managed, we, we've made it for over almost 2,000 years with that happening in the church. But let me tell you what I know about these naysayers. Most of them are the people that are bankrolling the church. They're here every Sunday. They're used to our traditions. And then the Jewish, they were worshiping in the synagogue. And so... There were people in the synagogue and the Jewish tradition, it was important that they keep the tradition, that they keep the laws, that they, that they understood their heritage from Moses, and that was who they were. And all of a sudden, somebody come in new, kicking up all this spirit and speaking in tongues and all that kind of stuff. That was a little unusual. But there's a place in the church for those who want to keep, make sure we keep our tradition. Now, if we were all that way, we'd be pretty bored. But there's a place in the church for those who want to keep their tradition. And what makes the church keep going after 2,000 years is how we receive each other in the church. Somebody come to church this morning and said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't wear red. And I said, well, I am not the church fashion police. I am not here to judge you. I am here to love you. And that's what the church is all about. And how, is, how can we love one another with our differences? Yes, and in, in, even in the, the time of the early church, there were the, the Jews. And that's how the, the, the Jesus people got kicked out of the synagogue because there were some really good Jews who said, we're going to keep the tradition. And you all start bringing those Gentiles in here They'll eat anything. They'll do anything. No. You know, get them out of here. We're not quite that exclusive in our church. But as I think about the differences that we have, and there are some who are, you know, it takes all of us. We're a family. But what makes this church work and what has made the church work, I think, for over two, for 2,000 years almost, is the fact that we have respect for one another. That's what makes our differences work. There are two ways we can communicate with each other. We can co communicate out of contempt or respect. 
And if we communicate out of respect for one another, regardless of our differences, if we could do that all over the world, there would probably be no violence. There would certainly be no school shootings. There would certainly be no war. If we could learn to speak to other to each other out of respect. And I don't know about you, but as much as I want to, every once in a while a word of contempt comes out of my mouth. When I get stressed out, I get very controlling. I start blaming people. And I know, you know, and I resort to what I call infantile behavior. And I think most of us do. But we're adults. I'm trying to become a mature adult. And it's important that when we speak to each other, we speak out of respect, regardless. And if you can't speak a word of respect, take a deep breath and zip your lip. We all get upset from time to time. We even get in life-threatening situations. But if we have the Holy Spirit with us, the Holy, same Holy Spirit that was with that church almost 2,000 years ago, the Spirit that has been with the church all these years, that's what it's going to take to survive. I've read that much of the church in the United States as we know it or have known it is dying. And one of the things I hear, I, I do a little reading and I do a little listening, and I may be wrong, but this is what's coming to me, is that when the church refuses to love and respect people, they leave. They vote with their feet. People no longer have the sense of obligation, well, I'm going to church and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to listen to somebody put me down. I'm going to sit there and listen to somebody complain about what I do. You know, because I have a relationship with Jesus and I need to be in church. That's the way I thought all my life. But people are saying after this COVID crisis, people don't think that way so much anymore. People come to church because they need to hear a word of hope. People come to church because sometimes they're lonely and they need somebody to reach out and, and to remind them that they are loved. No matter who they are, where they've been, what they've done, what they haven't done, what their lifestyle is, it doesn't matter. The church of Jesus Christ is the people who act out of love. And my mantra is, I am not here to judge you. I am here to love you. I'm not perfect. Some days I get out, get my nose bent out of joint. And when I do, I hope somebody in this group will tell me, lend a disclosure mouth for a minute. Because that's what we need to do. We need to make sure that every word that comes out of our mouth in this building and in the community where we're representing Jesus is a word of respect for another human being. No matter what they've done to us, no matter how many drugs they've taken, no matter how many children out of wedlock they've had, no matter how many years they've been single, Every person on this planet deserves a word of respect. And do you know that by speaking respectful words to people, you can change people's lives? Isn't that our witness to go out and transform people's lives? We don't have to go out and tell them that Jesus Christ came and so, so you, you know, you've got to get on your knees and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Our best witness is to speak to people out of respect. To treat them as equal human beings. 
We can do that. And that's what happened at that church of Pentecost. And people were speaking Spanish, and some people over here were speaking Iraqi, and some people back there were speaking Greek, and some people over here were speaking German. And those German people were saying, what are those Iraqis doing in our church? And those Mexican people are saying, those Italians back there don't even know how to get the language right. You know, we can complain about each other all night and all day. But wouldn't it be great to say, wow, it is so great to have Hispanic people in our church who can help us with that language. And wouldn't it be good to say, oh, man, there are Greeks here. And there are Italians. And there are Iraqis. And there are people that I haven't met before. And we're all here because of the love that Jesus Christ has for all of us. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great to see the humanity in the eyes of every person we meet and to speak words of respect? That's my dream for all of us in this Pentecostal church. That we recognize the humanity in each one of us. That we're willing to see the eyes of Jesus in each person we meet in this congregation and on the street. How would that change us? Yes, there are times in our lives when our lives feel threatened and we feel like, we, you know, and I'm not going to say, you know, if somebody had a gun at my throat, I probably wouldn't be too respectful and I wouldn't expect you to be either. You know, you've got to do what you've got to do to save your life. But most of the time, respect rather than contempt is the way that we keep the church going. Yes, there will always be a few naysayers among us, but they mean well. They keep the tradition going. Yes, there will always be a rabble-rouser group, and I'm probably part of that, that wants to do something new and get excited about things and all of that. Yeah, but that keeps church going too, and that, that dynamic, that that energy between those keeps the church going and keeps it alive. But what makes it work is that we speak out of respect for one another and we treat each other with respect. I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because I've never been in a church that does that as well as this church does. And I want to continue to encourage you to keep up that spirit. I want to applaud you for how well we do respect each other and respect e people in the community. And I want to say, keep it up. And I want to say, let's encourage each other to be respectful. And I want you to catch me. If I'm not being respectful, remind me. Because I'm still growing, I'm still learning, I still get up on the wrong side of bed and fall out the window. But I think that's what made that whole church come together that day. It wasn't the difference in tongues. It was the fact that, yes, indeed, they respected one another. And there will always be a group that says they're full of new wine. Well, 9 o'clock in the morning doesn't sound like a good way to start the day with a new wine. But there was something better among them, and it was what Jesus had sent. He called it the paraclete. He called it the Holy Spirit that I will send to be among you. And may that spirit be alive among us, and may we continue to, ex to express that spirit out of respect for one another and respect for members of our community. Let us pray together. Gracious God, Move your Holy Spirit over all of us this morning. Move a spirit of respect, a spirit of us knowing that regardless of how we speak, we are one in you, that we are all your children, and that we can see the face of Jesus in each other. Give us eyes to continue and give us voices of respect. We pray these things in the spirit of the living Christ. Amen.